this week's edition of Thunder Insider as we begin to wrap up the Thunder's 2013 playoff run. I'm Leslie McCaslin, joined once again by Brian Davis and Grant Long. Of course, the Thunder fall to Memphis 4-1 to in the second round. Guys, the thing that sticks out to me is we just watched a really incredible series. All of these games decided by six points or less. Brian, just your thoughts as the Thunder wraps up the playoffs. Well, first off, hats off to the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, this is a team that really sort of dictated the terms and won this series playing the way that the Grizzlies like to play basketball. The other thing that I'm reminded of, Grant, is that uh, this is a process. And, you know, you go from first round to conference finals to finals, and you're eliminated in the second round. Nothing is guaranteed from year to year. No, it's not guaranteed, but I I'm going to go back to, uh, I think I've said this before, back to October when this team, the Oklahoma City Thunder, decided that they were going to try to do this thing again, get back to the finals, and the effort and the commitment that it took to play an 82-game regular season schedule, go through all the adversity that they had to go through. Remember, at the be beginning of the season, there were some new players that arrived, and all of those things that they had to get done in, in order to get back to this point. They achieved the number one seeding in the Western Conference, so that's an accomplishment in itself when you go through that long 82-game process. And again, I think it's a credit to the, to the organization and the players that they were able to get things done in the way that they did. And a credit to the team's character. We saw them really fight even at the end of Game 5 to come back and bring it within two points. We also saw them start out really strong in Games 4 and 5 despite losing the two before. They had a 17-point lead in Game 4. They didn't win it when it came down to it, but they were able to set the tone early in these last couple of games. I've talked to quite a few people already, and they talk about the effort that we saw in game, in, in the game, a fifth game. Uh, nobody quit. They, these guys came back and continued to fight, even down to the final seconds of the ball game. They continued to play Thunder type basketball. Reggie Jackson comes down and knocks down a three in transition which tells you right there, had they had the opportunity to speed the game up more consistently, how more effective they could have been. But it wasn't to be. But at the, at the end of the day, the effort was never lacking. And Scott Brooks has to be very proud of his club from that standpoint. I think it's all about putting yourself in position to achieve a result. And although the Thunder was not able to get the job finished, uh, they should take a lot of pride in battling back and putting themselves in position. I mean, uh, there are a lot of teams that would have just rolled over under similar circumstances circumstances and the Oklahoma City Thunder did not. And Scott Brooks talked a lot during the playoffs how in Russell Westbrook's absence, the entire team was going to have to step up. Guys, we saw guys, different guys step up every night. Nick Collison, Serge Ibaka finally figured things out on offense, but he was great the whole time on defense. I mean, who sticks out to your, well, in your Ibaka mind? Ibaka is a guy, Leslie, that is really a good example of the adjustment that this team had to make when you consider that his primary setup man is Russell Westbrook. And this comes down to the real subtle stuff that uh, – that the casual fan doesn't necessarily see. But when Russell went down, the rhythm of Serge's game changed entirely. He had to adapt on the fly, and he did. Well, I like the fact that during the playoffs, the team, the first game without Russell Westbrook, even Nick Collison talked about this, you know, they're going to continue to play. They have to play it at an elevated status. But it was no longer that we're playing for Russ. It was that everybody needed to step up and do a little bit more. I even asked Kendrick Perkins about this. What does that mean when you hear your teammates say, they need to do a little bit more. And he said, well, it's about doing what you do, but just adding a little bit more to that. If you're a rebounder, you, you add one or two more rebounds to your total. If you're a passer or a facilitator, you try to get more assists, you try to get more guys involved in the offense. And we saw that from everybody. Everybody stepped up their play, and they held themselves accountable, I think, to a man. And I think anytime you do that, when you have a team like this, I think you're going to be better for it. Yeah, we just saw that video. Several different guys, Kevin Martin, Derek Fisher, on any given night, Reggie Jackson, one of those guys was stepping up and helping the Thunder advance to that next game. All right, well, let's hear what the players and head coach Scott Brooks had to say the night of game five. I want to congratulate the Memphis Grizzlies organization and Coach Hollins and his staff. They're having a, a, a heck of a year. Obviously, they've done a good job. And well, first off, we had a really good season. You know, it was a joy playing with these guys. It was a joy playing for this great city. Um, you know, we came up short, you know, was, Memphis is a really, really good team and um, they made it tough on us every one of these games, you know, I gave it all I had for my team. I left it all out there on the floor. Memphis found more ways to win than we did four times and that's what it comes down to. Uh, you know, we can talk about percentages and rebounds and who yeah. did this and but at the end of the day, the only number that matters is the one uh, that has win on, on, on the side of it. and. 
uh, they were the better team. I thought our guys, um, tonight's game, we did a great job of competing. We didn't have um, a lot of shots fall in, but we didn't, we didn't keep our head down and, and, and stop competing. And that's what, that's what te our team is built on, is the spirit of competition and competing for one another, and that's, that was very evident tonight, how we played. We gave our best, you know, so I think that's, that's why we can, uh, you know, keep our, keep our chains up and, um, and, 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 you know, get, get better during the summer. You know, we just kept battling. That's what it says. We're competitors. We fight till all zeros hit the clock, and uh, I think that's just our identity and who we are. Yeah, I'm always proud of my team, man. We always fight through, you know. We never let uh, nothing easy, you know. We, got, we do our best. And try to play hard to come back, but you know, happen. We we're a team that's never gonna give up. We never gonna make excuses. You know, Russell was, you know, was out. Our all-star point guard was out, but guys stepped up. You know, uh, Reggie was great. Fish was great. Kmart, Tabo. You know, we all stayed up. Just kept our spirits up no matter what, and we fought every single game. Every one of these games came down to the last few minutes, and um, it was unfortunate that we didn't uh, come out on the winning side, um, except for once, um, but. You know, it's, like I said, we're going to look down, you know, from down the line, we're going to look back at this and really appreciate it. And, um, you know, sometimes you got to uh, ride out some storms to get to the sunshine. So we got to continue to, you know, keep believing in each other and, you know, believing in this process and it'll be all right. Hi, I'm Serge Ibaka. You're watching Thunder Insider. And welcome back to Thunder Insider. We're now joined by Matt Pinto, who had the call all season on the Thunder Radio Network and during the playoffs, of course, with Grant Long. Well, this was a team that wanted to come into the playoffs and push the pace, keep Memphis off the offensive glass. We saw the Thunder do this several times during the series. How in the end, though, was Memphis able to impose their will and what they wanted to do? I think it was really a combination, Leslie, because when you look back to the Houston series, off of the Russell Westbrook injury, there was more a mandate on let's be somewhat contained in how we approach things. Then in the Memphis series, I think the uh, determination was made we've got to try to pick the pace up and attack them before they're set defensively. And I think, Grant, that this team team um, didn't quite sync up fully with the two different approaches. I, I think the, the opponent had a lot to do with that in the two series. But when the Thunder did find a way to accelerate the pace, they found good shots against the Grizzlies. Well, I think we must first talk about why they wanted to speed up the pace. You've got a seven-footer in, in Marcus Gasol and a 6'9", 6'10", guy in Zach Randolph. Their method of operation is to lean on you the entire time that they're playing, whether offensively or defensively. It's a grind on both ends of the floor. So increasing the pace of the game would create separation and would not allow those guys to lean on you and slow you down a bit. It makes you more effective when you, when you uh, increase the pace of the game. The Thunder did that to a smaller degree and they had some success with it. They weren't able to sustain it and that's when you give credit to the Grizzlies because they were able to instill or input their method of operation and keep the Thunder out of transition. One of the good things we saw through the series was the development of Reggie Jackson who his number was called. He stepped in kind of like when your parents tell you Hey, now's the time for you to grow up. We saw Reggie Jackson grow up during these playoffs. He got better at passing. He got better all the way around. How is this going to help this team in the future? Well, I think it could be a monumental step forward for Reggie individually and for this team collectively because they now have a player that they feel like, I believe, coming back to training camp, they can really entrust more responsibility to. And Grant, I think he began to learn what he's capable of on this level when the, uh, the, the uh, spotlight shining most brightly. I mean, he did not shy away from taking big shots, creating for teammates, and really digging down and coming up with big plays throughout the course of the playoffs. I think he's a poster child for development because you think about this, this is, this is his first playoff series, first playoff opportunity. Missed it last year, although he was on the team. He got, through, got to go through a training camp, uh, summer league last year, or over the summer. All of those things took place for him. So it's been a process for Reggie to get to this point, and he has enjoyed the process the entire time, taking and picking up little tidbits, tidbits as he goes along. And this is what we're seeing from Reggie. That's why he's developed the way that he has, because he's taken this process and enjoyed it. He, he's, he's learned as he's went along, and that's, again, that's what we're seeing from him. The one thing he has, a lot like his baseball namesake, is that he <laughs> talks about, I really want to be a great player, and I'm committed to having that happen. And we see that in the way he's continuing to grow.